At 83, Owen Williams has slowed down from his seven years playing on the international tennis circuit. The story of a boy born in Ngobo in the former Transkei to his towering six foot four gait on centre court at Wimbledon in the 50s. As a diagnosed haemophiliac, contact sports were out of the question, and in many ways, tennis chose him. England was every tennis playing schoolboy worldwide dream. And one day I went to the uh, Port Elizabeth Championships, the Eastern Province, and I saw Sturgis playing there. And some guys had just, uh, Rhodes University guys, had just come back from uh, Wimbledon. And they told me all about the expense system and how they got to qualify for Wimbledon. And suddenly the dream was on. Given passage on a Royal Mail ship as a potato peeler, he would eventually land in Europe, where he quickly became highly regarded, eventually becoming the seventh seed among foreign players at the US Open in 1954, where he reached the fourth round, his highest showing in a singles Grand Slam. He would also reach the quarterfinals at Wimbledon and Australia in the doubles format in the same year. Oh, and you write that in 1956, at the age of 25, you quit the tour, and I quote, I had come to the sad realization that although I could happily tour for another five to ten years, the bummer was that I knew instinctively that I could never become number one or win Wimbledon. So, business became the new game, and you were good at that too, were you not? I'd met a girl, I wanted to get married, uh, I wanted to start in business. Um, the tennis tour was so exotic, it was very tough to give up. And it was in business and tennis administration that he would make his mark, first at the South African Champs and then as director of the US Open at Forest Hills in 69. In one year, which we really didn't cover in any depth, I took the South African by applying business methods and working round the clock to second in the world. And so suddenly I had this reputation that I could walk on water and transform tennis tournaments. So they brought me over here, uh, apartheid South African, white South African, uh, Arthur Ashe was just coming up in those days and uh, I got away with it at Forest Hills because there were two boycotts called and Arthur Ashe came out ahead of me and totally defused both of them. I hadn't asked him, I'd gone out there to try and give my own credentials as a liberal white South African member of the Progressive Party, at, or, which wouldn't have counted for a hill of beans, <laughs> but uh, Arthur, Arthur talked them out of it. That was the start of a good friendship, with Williams eventually twisting the arm of Prime Minister John Forster to grant Ash honorary white status that would allow him into the country to compete at the South African Open in the mid-70s. What do you think the impact of Arthur Ashe's visit to South Africa was? Arthur was an enormous worldwide story. His two visits in a row to the South African Open made my tournament second, really cemented it as second only to Wimbledon. Um, it was uh, an exciting time. The first trip out, Arthur's eyes were so wide, he never left my side. We, we phoned ahead to every restaurant every night in, in Joey's in Johannesburg. and. Uh, and Arthur was scared of people molesting him. By the second visit, he was being very casual. He was going into restaurants by himself. He was going into Soweto by himself. And he became very relaxed. And that led to he and I starting the Black Tennis Foundation, which over a 15 year period, built about 1,200 tennis courts in the, uh, in the townships uh, all around South Africa. The book details his life in and out of tennis, the cocktail parties, dancing with celebrities and rubbing shoulders with some of the biggest names in entertainment and business. Money, as we all know, has fundamentally changed the face of sport around the world. The winner's check back in the 50s at Wimbledon was apparently a £25 voucher. It is now £1.76 million. What has the impact of money been on sport and do you regret not playing in this era? I couldn't want to change my life anyway, anyhow. And to look back and begrudge, what did you say, 1.76 million pounds, three million dollars, uh, to the current guys, I think they're worth every penny of it because television is what has caused that rise. I don't even bother to go to uh, Flushing Meadows anymore, <laughs> to the Arthur Ashe Stadium, uh, because it's so good on television. 
Um, so, no, I don't, I don't look with any uh, grudging, uh, some admiration. I would have, I would have done well with uh, a private jet and uh, a manager <laughs> <laughs> and somebody to massage me instead of <laughs> having to pay for it. <laughs> These days, Owen Williams still pays his way, running Sports Management Strategies International, the exclusive worldwide agency for chess legend Gary Kasparov. Sherman Bryceby's SABC News, New York.